February 6, 2010, three the soldiers, very in Cali. There are three soldiers. Uh, Ale, ci sono tre soldati qua, stanno parlando con i ragazzi. Stiamo filmando, sì. Eh, sì. What, what's the problem? Ah, lì sta spingendo verso la camionetta, ah, le senti, ti conviene venire. Ah, il mio nome è Amir e ho 13 anni. Sono in Fakaria Tituani. Amir, cosa è successo con te prima di un anno? Quando ero giù per il giro. Quando ero con me, ero con me e con me. Ero con me e con me. Ero con me e con me. طلعنا فوق هيك جبنا معنا أجنبيين يعني رحنا نلاقي في أرضنا إحنا في أرضنا وحن لو بيجي البتحون ما وزع علينا الجيش أجي الجيش مسكوا منا الكعبات وفغصوهن وكبكبون على الأرض وأجل بقولنا أقعد على الأرض يعني كان عنا قلنا الحمد لله أنه بقى معنا أجانب وإنه يعني قتلونا يعني <تصفيق> They are taking one kid with them. Yeah. But for this, I told them I am not a big man. I told them I أجل بالحقنا في البارودي بتطخني آخر شيء وقفت سلمت حالي وطلعت في الجب وبعدين أخذونا فوق لهو لهو فوق عند ورا المستوطني وأخذونا عند ورا المستوطني حقق معانا قيش عمره قد شو اسمه ويعني أجل الشرطي يعني هو شرطي أجل بدي يضربني يعني بدي مدد علينا حكون عمرك ترجع هنا وفيش أراضي هنا هذول الأراضي للمستوطنين ما فيش لكم أراضي ويعني يعني حتى الآن وأنا خايف منهم يعني بطلت أروح غاد على أرضنا يعني ب. Quello che ci troviamo a passare adesso, da adesso in poi, è il blocco degli insegnamenti che in assoluto è il più, il più grosso ed è quello, uno dei primi nati. E qui c'è il muro. Quello che si vede lì dove sono gli autobus è il checkpoint che come vedrete assomiglia molto ad un, ad un casello autostradale. Qui Combina riprendere con molta discrezione.
هذول مستوطنين بيتحلكوا للعرب بيقول لك الا ان بيدكو هذول هذا هذا الحج بده هذا اطلاق نار للغنم اطلاق نار للغنم وهن موجودات مشان يحاربوا كمان الفلسطينيين في لقمه العيش تبعهم حرق مزروعات هذا حرق مزروعات كيف بعد ما بتعب الفلسطيني في الارض تبعه بكون مزارع بينزلوا المستوطنين بعد ما يقعد اسبوع يتعب بيجوا بحرقوه ولعوا فيه النار وطير هذه الممارسات هذا جزء بسيط من الممارسات تاعت الاحتلال صابر هريني رئيس مجلس قروي تأسس مجلس غرو ثاني في مجيء السلطة الفلسطينية في عام 97 تذبوني كرئيس للمجلس منطقة ثاني منطقة نائية ومهمشة على مدار 30 عام من الاحتلال كان لا يوجد فيها لا ماء ولا كهرباء ولا طرق ولا عيادي ولا صحة ولا أي نوع من مقاومات الحياة سنس 1967 until this moment, Tuani is existed under the Israeli military control. The Israeli occupation declared this area as a military area. So they started implementing kind of strategy or policy to evacuate the people and to expel the people away of this area. They started first with the confiscation of the land by, you know, different excuses, like to even to declare this like closed military zone, prayer zone, or whatever. Five o'clock. It's already 20 minutes that there are waking up people without any reason. And they didn't want to explain what they are looking for. The village of Atuani is in plain area C, so it is a area of the Cisjordania under total administration, civil and military Israelian. The soldiers, in particular, are often in the for the villages, and very often enter into the village. Di notte fanno irruzioni nelle case eh, cercando armi come altre cose o anche solo per intimidire le persone. Pertanto è una zona particolarmente svantaggiata come ce ne sono tante e, e particolarmente militarizzata. In the beginning of the 80s and on the, this, conf this confiscated land they established four main settlements in this area. They invited radical Orthodox Jew in these settlements. You know, like these uh, settlers, they believe that this land like belongs to, to them and they do whatever they can, just like, you know, to make the, the Palestinians life in this area harder and harder and just like to push them to leave this area. They used like the violence against like all like humans, yeah, livestock, young, old, even children, you know, with like physical attacks. They started with the evacuation policy as happened in the end of 99. They took these people with their sheep, with the, their uh, families and they threw them to the other side of the road 317, the road that established in the beginning of the 80s. 
and they considered it uh, they considered this road as a border for this area and they wanted like just to uh, expel the people in the other side of this road السكان بيعتمدوا على مولد كهرباء اللي انتم شايفينه هذا بضوي ها بضوي ثلاث ساعات الى اربع ساعات في الليله في اليوم طبعا من بعد ال بعد المغرب لغايه الساعه 10 10 ونص ليلا بعدها بطفي قمنا بالتشبيك مع السلطه الفلسطينيه بإعطائنا مشروع كهرباء إلا أنه بعد ما قضعنا وركبنا كل وجهز أو جهز المشروع كامل تفاجأنا بقوة إسرائيلية كبيرة جدا اقتاح مثل القرية وفكوا الأبراج وصادروا صادروا المعدات اللي موجودة تشتغل في المنطقة فاستطعنا نظل نحاول نشتغل على المولد احنا يعني مجتهدين على سبيل ان نقدم اي خدمات كمجلس قروي للمنطقه، نقدم خدمات ولو انها بسيطه للمناطق اللي كمان في جنبنا الا انه الاحتلال واسرائيل مانعه انه نعمل حتى اقل شيء طريق ترابي يربط بيننا وبين القرى المجاور لنا. 25 نوفمبر 2009 the border police and the police with the truck I think they are trying to put down the, the part of the line for the light. بين المستوطنات وبين الواقع اللي بتعيشه مثلا القرية شو المفارقات الموجودة؟ <تصفيق> يعني سؤال لما تيجي تتكلم عن الواقع الفرق بين المستوطنات الاسرائيليه المقامه اللي مقامه في بجانبنا وعلى اراضينا واخذوهن بالقوه هذول يعني في فرق كبير يعني هم الحكومه الاسرائيليه او الاحتلال بقدم لهم كل الخدمات طرق كهرباء مباني مدعومين للمستوطنين من جميع مناحي الحياه وبوفروا لهم كل مقومات الحياه يعني على سبيل المثال في عندهم الشجر اللي بيسقوه في الميه بيشرب شجره واحده تشرب قد كل قريه تتواني وسكانها، كثير فرق شاسع كبير، هذا كله سياسه احتلال وسياسه منهج مبرمجه لاخلاء المناطق اللي زي هاي وعلى شاكلتها وعلى مثيلاتها من الخرب مشان يفضوهن من السكان الحقيقيين، هذا المغزى السياسي عند الاسرائيليين. قدمنا مخططات يعني هيكليه للبلد مشان يصادق الجانب الاسرائيلي عليها الا انه من قبل اربع سنوات قوبلت بالرفض ولحتى الان في محاميين اسرائيليين من حركات السلام يساريه داعمه وداعم المقاومه الشعبيه السلميه والا انه لحتى الان ما بدهم يوافقوا او ما بدهم يعطوا توسع توسع على السكان مشان يقدروا يبنوا بيوت لاولادهم ولاطفالهم في المنطقه هاي من سنة 1900 و سنة 1995 
واحنا بنعاني مشاكل صعبه جدا جدا وداميه مع المستوطنين الاسرائيليين المتطرفين طبعا مش كل المستوطنين او مش كل اليهود المتطرفين جزء كبير منهم موجود هنا في منطقه الخليل خاصه في منطقه يطا وفي شرق يطا وجنوب يطا هذه الارض تبعتنا يعني واحنا عايشين فيها مش عايشين للارهاب ولا بنعمل ارهاب هذول الناس اللي بيعملوا الارهاب هم بيسووا المستوطنات اللي هناك احنا بنروح عليهم على المستوطنات انا بقول للاجانب الموجودين شفتوا فلسطيني راح لعند مستوطنه معون او مستوطنه كرميل او سوسي هم بيجوا عندنا ولما بيجوا الجيش بيجي لصالح المستوطنين احنا مش موجودين في منطقه مشاكل زي ما بيحكوهم احنا موجودين في منطقه مكشوفه وعازله وهاديه جدا ما فيها مشاكل الا من المستوطنين فقط والجيش الاسرائيلي وراهم الجيش الاسرائيلي بيدعمهم اشتردش يا حيوان في صحافه اشتردش انتوا شفتوا يعني الجيش الاسرائيلي الحين لاجوا لعندي مدججين باحدث الاسلحه ما شاء الله وطبعا اسلحه امريكيه ولبس امريكاني اللبس اللي عليهم انتوا شفتوهم كيف اجوا علي في ارض مزروعه فلسطينيه مطرح زرع فلسطيني وكان المستوطن مخربها يعني بدل ان هم اللي وراء المستوطن بيقولوا خرب الزرع الفلسطيني بيقولوا له روح من هون لا انا قريب من حدودهم ولا انا قريب من المستوطني بعيد عنها كيلوات الامتار ما بشوفها فهذول الناس يعني انا اللي حسب بني شايفه يعني بدهم يخلونا في البلاد بحالها وشكرا لكم يس ايوه I remember I lived in Palestine up until I was 12 years old And those memories from 20 years ago come back to me every day that I serve in Tawani. It is unfortunate that I am seeing and facing the same thing 20 years um, after I've been living in the United States. Occupation is still ongoing. And I came back to Palestine after uh, 20 years to try and help as much as possible. because of those memories that I had as a child. We are not talking about one or two or ten or hundred cases. We're talking about many, many, many hundreds of cases uh, which uh, the settlers had expanded to areas which, according to the Israeli law, applied in the West Bank, considered to be illegal. The problem here, the main problem here, from my point of view as an Israeli citizen, is that not only that the Israeli if authorities, police, military, civil administration, not only that they know about it, in many, many, many cases, they're actually participating in it, and they're part of it. They are encouraging it, they're paying it, they uh, give the settlers uh, the uh, protection, the settlers are totally impugned from any kind of legal, legal uh, uh, um, uh, consequences. Just to give you the dimension, when we talk about Jewish min minority in the West Bank, about somewhere between 10, 11, 12% of the population in the West Bank today is uh, Israeli, you know, they are Israeli Jews, uh, in other words, Israeli settlers who are living in, in, in the West Bank. The other, uh, almost 90% of the population is uh, Palestinian. Now, the idea is, of course, to move as, as much as possible of land 
in the West Bank to the hands of Israeli settlers in order to block the possibility of a Palestinian collective in the West Bank uh, to uh, run any kind of uh, state or something similar to a state. The settlements are expanding uh, in many cases actually to the areas which are beyond the borders and not within the borders because what happened is the Israeli authority, the Syrian administration is anyhow keeping the Palestinians out of the official borders. What the settlers are doing, they are focusing on the land which is beyond the borders yeah, in order to take both, to take the official and the non-official. The Israeli welfare state is more or less uh, dying or being dismantled because right-wing economic policies are becoming dominant in Israel. But there is a, a very strong welfare system in the settlements. So people who are looking for uh, a, better, a better life, it's very natural for them to to go and live in the uh, in a settlement. In the bottom line, it's of course much, much, much cheaper, much cheaper to buy a house or to rent a house in Maon than in uh, in Jerusalem. I think that uh, for many people living in the settlements, not only in Maon specifically, it's a combination of few things. You know, they look for perhaps uh, affordable housings. They look for very cohesive uh, community, which you know, were very strong community sense but uh, very often once people move to the settlement even if it did not become did not did not get there with strong uh, uh, right wing uh, um, ideology once they live there they adapt to the discourse on 7th march 2010 i'm taping the the construction of the basements of the new house of the settlement mound September 13, we are in a Tuani village. There are soldiers with a person. We don't know who he is. Uh, they are taking some information about the new houses. It's a demolition order. قبل الاستيطان كنا يعني حياة صعبة ولكن ما كان فيش احتلال ضاهدنا وكانت الحياة دائما تكون صعبة ولكن فيش احتلال وفيش مستوطنين وفيش معاناة زي اليوم ومن يوم الناجة المستوطنة في اثنين وثمانين وإحنا بنعاني من اثنين وثمانين وإحنا بنعاني حتى الآن في مجالات الحياة وبعدين تش في الترحيل وفي في السبعة وتسعين هدم الخير بهذه ككلها ما خلوش حجر ما حجر لما حولونا لمحكم لما انفضحوهم الصحفية وصوروا واطلعوا قرار واجونا على خربة التواني زباط جب زباط له بقول يا حج انت ساكن هنا بنشوف لك محل غير محلك هذا بنسكنك فيه احسن من محلك بنسكنك فيه قلت لهم والله انا ما مستعد ارحل من مسكني وتسكنني في مس محل واحد عربي ثاني تطرده وتسكنني انا ويجي العربي يذبحنا او اذبحه عشان انت تسكن في ارضي انا بعرض على ارضي يا بموت فيها يا باحيا فيها primarily settlers the issue of settlers who have moved next door to pal local Palestinian residents and those settlers choosing to continually harass and make the life of their new Palestinian neighbors as difficult and miserable as they can is something that's seen in both Hebron and Atawani. Hebron obviously is an urban setting and the settlers that are in Hebron are directly in the city and living next door 
it's much closer proximity than it is here perhaps, but it's the same root issue. In, in Hebron, if you walk down the main souk market area, you will see up above you there are metal, metal nets that are there to catch rocks, catch garbage, catch objects that are thrown from apartments where settlers live above. And Hebron is a more stark and clear picture of how it's basically an, an apartheid state. So you can go to this, this situation from the roof from this family, Palestinian. Because this is a family living beside the Israeli settlers. And every time the Israeli throws stones, throws rubbish from this family, because living here. I can't see it from the roof, come. There's definitely a policy of, of uh, uh, indoctrination, uh, uh, quite orchestrated. Uh, um, and and it's, it's kind of built in into the whole system, the whole Zionist narrative here to regard uh, the Palestinians as, as a threat. It's like we represent the enlightened, enlightened West uh, in front of all these barbarians. It's, it's very natural to, to, to ignore the Palestinians, especially if you look at, at large-scale projects like the wall or the bypass roads for the, for the settlers like creating a reality in the occupied territories where people don't, don't see the Palestinians, and in general also inside Israel, not really uh, exposing people to the lives of, uh, of uh, Palestinians. So if you look, if you have a look, you can see like the, the settlement, like of Ma'on and Abigail here, you know, and Susi and the other and Carmel there. So the goal is just like to control this side. One, you can see, it's like the uh, the main gateway for the whole the whole area. By their their attacks, you know, you know, and to control the area, they want just like to to cut this, you know, like to cut this way. But uh, you know, now they believe that uh, Tuan is <laughs> strong village, you know, and they can't like evacuate.
أنا اسمي محمود حسين الحمامدي من سكان خربة المفقرة مواليد سنة 1965 قبل احتلال إسرائيل ومن غاية ال 65 وإحنا عايشين بأمان واستقرار ووضع محترم جدا برغم الظروف يعني اللي إحنا عايشينها بالكهوف والمغر وتربات المواشي والزراعة والفلح وهذه شغلتنا وهذه طبيعة أبائنا وأجدادنا من قبل يعني فإحنا خلينا مستمرين عليها إلى غاية ال 82 83 بدأت مستوى أوضع المستوطنة عندنا مستوطنة كرميل ومعون وبعدها صار عندنا مضايقات شوي شوي من المستوطنين وصاروا في ال 85 يعطونا على أرض المصفرة اللي هي المنطقة التحتة إن هذه منطقة عسكرية ظل مستمرين لغاية 14 11 99 حاولوا بترحيل جميع المناطق جميع الخرب المجاوري بما فيها احنا وتواني وقدمنا اوامر المحامي اللي كانت المحاميه تبعتي انا وابراهيم ابو جندي تبعين الطوبه نت عمار وباقي الخرب المجاوري في المسافر كان شلون ليكر ل 80 عائله فاستمرينا لغايه ال 2000 في 29 3 ال 2000 طلع قرار في المحكمة بترجيع هذه الناس إلى أراضيها بأي أسباب لأنه كان عندنا دخل عندنا اللي هم بيت سيلم و... وسلام الآن والمدينين اللي هم الخخامية ضد هدم البيوت وفهمنا التلعبات الإسرائيلية شو موجودة وبعدها استمرينا نهار ما رجعنا بالضبط يوم واحد أربعة رجعوا جميع المواطنين مع رجعة المستوطنين أخذوا يعني ثلثين أراضينا وأكثر من سلسلتين كمان أخذوهن. I think the settlers' strategy, and from my perspective and what I've seen in targeting shepherds when they go out to their fields each day, again is one a strategy of trying to take more land. If you attack and target shepherds and their flocks of sheep, if sheep and goats are sort of the main source of sustenance and income for villagers here. So if you target their main source of livelihood, that is again a very effective way to attempt to convince people to move from this, this area, move from Atawani, move elsewhere. According to the Israeli law, um, in general, uh, settlements cannot expand to uh, areas which are defined, acknowledged as uh, private Palestinian property. Israel built the settlements Officially, again, now I'm emphasizing officially, only on what Israel declares as state land, public land, in other words. Israel, in the last uh, 30 years, the Israeli authority in the last 30 years, had uh, defined just about 50% of the West Bank as state land, so they have a lot of land uh, to expand to legally. But uh, as I said before, this is not enough. They want also their private. In some point, the settlers had been able to expand and to close huge areas around the settlements which the Palestinians used to be able to access to. This next step, once, uh, in many, many cases, once the Palestinians are denied from entering, entering the land, suddenly what you see is that uh, in some point the settlers come into this area and start actively to cultivate the area and then the de facto ownership of the land is moving from the Palestinians to the Israeli settlers. di olivi qui i primi sette centrali li hanno rotti a febbraio del 2008 
e qualche mese fa hanno spezzato anche quelli esterni, quindi quasi tutto il campo è distrutto ed è il campo più danneggiato negli ultimi anni perché è proprio vicino all'avamposto e non visibile dal villaggio, quindi i palestinesi proprietari della dell'appezzamento non, non riescono mai a vedere cosa succede a questo campo di vivi. Today is the 8th of November, it's almost 9 a.m. Uh, we are with two bush shepherds in Umzetun Valley and there are four young settlers. They are plowing the land in the valley that belongs to Palestinians. Today, the 15th of November, we are over on Meshacha. The shepherds are out, the shepherds are on Meshacha Hill or somewhere down in the valley. There's a group of settlers. This one coming down. The donkey is left up there. There are two settlers beside it. The settlers are masked. They came over from Havat Ma'on. They chased the people off the hill of the old Havat Ma'on. The shepherds and their sheep. They chased us hard like rocks, hitting people several times. And now they are stealing the Palestinians' donkey. November 15th, 1149. This is the other donkey that was with the machine. The time of the attack. And the settlers have killed it. The concept of enlargement the borders de facto borders of settlements you know it, or in, include within it also areas which are not official part of a settlement yeah it's something which goes already already goes on already for a few dozens of years uh, but it's become much 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 wider and dominant phenomena in the last 10 years since the beginning of a second intifada now the uh, security pretext or excuse was of course perfect for it, you know. We have to keep Palestinian out because there were cases where Palestinian got into settlements and killed settlers, okay? So the settlers had a perfect excuse in order to push further and to eliminate the possibility of Palestinians to get into the land. That has to be done by violence. The only way to achieve it is by deterring and by scaring people. And it's being done together with the settlers and the military, and uh, Tuani is probably one of the most perfect places to see how the military and the settlers work together. There is a certain line which Palestinians cannot cross. Most likely about these shepherds that are in Homer Valley above the village of Atuani. Army has arrived after speaking with the settler. Why, why you go with your sheep here? Okay, so we, it's uh, obligated uh, to go here 
And if I will see you once again here. Yeah? 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 Uh -huh. And I don't friend from all the cameras. No, no, see it, see it. So. What you can do? I, I, give me your uh, ID. No one has. No, you have no ID? No. You have no ID? No. You have no ID? Okay, come with me, two of you. Come. No. No. Okay. This is their land. The army come for us when I am sure by that time, me and my brother. And they come and tell us, if we see you here, we kill you. We are here in Homra, near my home. When I ask him why it's my land, they tell me you are under the rest. And that time, they hit my brother. They don't want to make any problems. They're not. It's just yeah. like everybody. So why you come with the camera? Don't, only that you want. Uh, you no, have. No, no, no. You have a uh, provocation to no, see no, no, no. that. We're in not the, trying to provoke. Listen, yeah. Listen, oh, listen. You, you want to see it in TV provocation? No, 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 no. Listen. We don't use in violence. They they won't want violence. You want no, no, violence. Listen, we listen. don't want wild violence. Can you listen to me for just yeah, a second? I can listen. Okay, the reason that we're here yeah. is because sometimes the settlers that live in the outpost come out like and attack the shepherds and the sheep. So that's why we have the cameras. Like They only want to tip the settlements. That's what they want. They, when they arrest me, they start to hit me in the jeep with the weapons. And that time they arrest me at 10 o'clock in the morning and I'm free and 10 o'clock in the night. All this time, I didn't have a break. Usually they hit me. Next to my own, where you know soldiers are, you know, chasing Palestinian uh, shepherds and acting violently against them because of the settlers, the soldiers who are there, you know, they are indoctrinized. They learn to believe that. The problem is that Palestinians are getting into the land. Not the problem that the settlers are taking land which never belonged to them. And with, when this reality consists over one year, two years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, just become, it just become a nature of the entire society. Just become what we are eventually. This is, you know, most of us do not care. Few people like me who do care or very much care, have a very, very altogether marginal voice in our own society. My name is Saha Ovaldi. I'm 18. I'm a Shmini state. My name is Yuval Owon. I'm 19 years old. I'm a Shmini My name is Maya Yechieli Vind. I'm 19. I'm a Shmini state. Shministi means 12 graders in Hebrew. We are Israeli conscientious objectors. That means we refuse to serve in the Israeli army. Because they are occupying another people, the Palestinians. Shministi in Hebrew means 12th graders. Uh, and we're a group of refusers, high school graduates, who decided to refuse to join the Israeli army because of the occupation of Palestine. Then each of us in turn, instead of uh, joining the army and being drafted, we all went to prison. In general, the, Israel has a uh, compulsory army service for every person at the age of 18. Um, and so because of that, the Israeli society, um, not only is it obvious that everyone goes to the army because it's, it's, it's the law, 
uh, but also the whole um, society in a way is drafted and not only the actual soldiers in, in the age of 18 um, because the educational system uh, in many ways makes sure that, that people will want to go to the army because there is this kind of social consensus that the army is, is the essence of being an Israeli. We have the Holocaust Memorial Day, the next week is the Soldiers Memorial Day, and the next morning is Independence Day. That's kind of like the structure of things. There was a Holocaust, we had to fight for our country, now we have independence. And it's all part also of a national sort of narrative and of a national ethos that they tell us, you know, people have sacrificed, not just in death, not just in wars, but people have built this country for you, for your future. Um, and it's seen as a very treacherous, very ungrateful thing. Uh, to then go and refuse to do, to partake in, in an organization that's seen as, as the organization of the people. The red line is certainly refusal. That's a red line you do not cross. That's seen as a very extreme thing to do. Once you break the law, once you, you're, you're a criminal, you know, you're breaking the, the law, the, the rules of the game. When you grow up in Israel, it's, uh, it's, it's very natural to, to go to the army. For some people, it's very it's a natural choice, even when they're 18 year, years old. Uh, for some people, it, it, ta it takes more time to, to learn about the circumstances and uh, formulate their own uh, their own views. Gradually, like over the years, when you see more and more and you learn more and more about about the occupation, I, I think it, it becomes a, a more uh, obvious. Uh, uh, this, this decision to, to, to support refusal. Just to give you an idea in terms of the numbers, there are about 17 to 20,000 Israelis drafted per year. Um, in our year, we were 10 refusers. The first refusal letter was actually in 2001. The second was in 2005, and we are actually the third letter of 2008. Sicuramente di contraddizioni in questo posto ce ne sono veramente tante e ci vuole del tempo per capire. C'è da fare delle distinzioni, non capisci più quello, quello che è giusto e quello che è sbagliato. E, e la stessa, per esempio, la stessa scorta dei bambini è un'enorme contraddizione. E io ancora oggi, a distanza di anni, faccio fatica ad abituarmi all'idea che sia normale che dei soldati israeliani debbano 
proteggere i bambini palestinesi da, da attacchi di altri israeliani che non potrebbero neanche stare lì perché vivono in un avamposto che è illegale secondo la stessa legge israeliana. Tutte le mattine si ripete sempre la stessa storia. Cioè vedi i bambini che fanno la loro stradina dal villaggio, la strada che dovrebbero fare normalmente in una strada pubblica e la fanno scortata da dei soldati. الإسرائيليين ما بعطوش ترخيص ما بعطوش رخصة للبناء فالحمد لله لحد الآن لحد الآن شغال المدرسة رغم المعيقات الإسرائيلية ورغم الاعتداءات والتحديات المستوطنين It's 10th of February 2010 we are Leon School Patrol we are checking School patrol and the car of setters is sto stop near the hammer. One setters came out. Principalmente la, il primo motivo della nostra presenza come internazionali è stato quello di accompagnare i bambini nel tragitto da e per la scuola. La strada più corta. Uh, da percorrere dai villaggi di Tuba e Magarlabid per venire ad Attuani eh, passa però in mezzo tra l'insediamento di Maon e l'avamposto di Avat Maon e i bambini venivano lungo il tragitto eh, numerose volte sono stati attaccati e picchiati dai coloni أز يمكن ثلاث سنين قعدوا الأولاد تلف الدرب اللي جتوه قالوا لهم ليش أنا بليش لا إحنا بنخذ ما إحنا معانا في حمايتنا بنخذ قعدوا نهارين ثالث اليوم أجوا ونجاي فرد مستوطنين لابسين مقنعين على وجوههم الحين خلوا المس ال الأمريكان لما غلطوا على أنا جاي هم لبدوا في الحراش الحين الأولاد أخذوهم زعدتهم يعني زي كل نهار لما خلوهم تحت الهواء وصلوا المستوطنين في عرق الشجر تبع الحراش هم كل واحد يحمل خشبة من الحطب تبع النشر ويتوشع الأولاد الأولاد عارفين البلاد وشردوا هذلك الأجانب وقفوا الحين ظلوا الأجانب وقفوا لهم قال خلنا شرت لهم أميركا قالت أنتوا ضربتوا هيك ذيك سويتوا في التعيين الحين بدكوا تظلوا هذولا لهم حقوق بدكوا تظلوا ورا الأولاد تأخذوهم وتودوهم بال... بالقوة تجيبوهم من المستوطنين وترجعوهم لأهله الحين صاروا يجوا للأولاد يأخذوهم الجيش الصبح ورجعوهم للعصر ولا ظلت لحتى الآن يعني الحين صاروا بعض أيام يتمغنطوا مرار يجوهم الساعة تسعة مرار يجوهم الساعة ثمانية مرار يجوهم الساعة سبعة يعني لا الحين هي مغمطة يعني فكرهم إن نسينا الخرفية ودشرناه والله واضح لمن دابع لحتى الآن في الحياة 
كنا الصبح طبعا طالعين على المدرسه جايين، الحين كنا يا طلاب عدد قليل يعني مع الاجيال، الحين كانوا الاولاد ماشيين قدامنا يعني وانا بتاخر كثير ورا. الحين احنا ما قدرناش نرجع عشان المستقيم، هم كانوا بعيدين عنا، فليت واقف، الحين طلعت للاولاد برجعوا. لما انهم رجعوا الى واحد اسمه مريم بنت عمر يعني طبشينها بحاجه والاجنبي كاملينه يعني الحين جيت انا واقف هم بيجوا الحين انا فكرت يعني رجعوا لنا ولا هم باقيين المستطيلين يحوروهم الحين ضايلين الاجانب هم باقيين يقولوا تطلب الاجانب الاولاد شاردين جاي بعدين ما رحت ما رحناش على المدرسه يعني ومن بعدها بعدين صاروا يعني يجيبوا لنا جيش و يعني احنا حسينا حالنا نروح يعني هيك واحنا يعني اطفال كلهم صغار احنا جايين نتعلم ونروح بسلام ويجي بسلام تصور كيف بيبقوا يلبسوا وكيف بيبقوا اقتناعهم وكيف بدهم يعتادوا عليه وبعد مرات الواحد بيصير يتوهم يعني كيف بدهم يجوا وبعد مرات هذا شيء يعني صحيح كثير كيف الواحد بيجي وبيصير يحلم فيه وعلى المايا على المايا وعلى يا ملاي يا بني يا بالله سكيني يا عطشان سكيني مايا وعلى المايا على المايا وعلى يا ملاي يا بني يا بالله سكيني يا عطشان سكيني مايا يا عوير وين عيوننا عيون الماء يا عيون يا عوير وين عيون عيون الماء يا عيون وندبرت لشفونها تدغدغني الحانة يا وعلما يا علما يا that the goal of the occupation in this area just like to evacuate the people away. In the end of the 99, when the uh, evacuation took place, we got some Israeli attention, Israeli media attention by the Israeli peace activists. We go to the law and uh, by the Israeli help with the Israeli lawyer, you know, after about four or five months of the evacuation, there was really very important resolution by this court that said that, you know, for the Palestinians, the right to get back to their villages. So it was really big, successful for the Palestinians in this area. Just like to use, it's like really non-violent way, you know, just like to go, to resist them by their law. أنا لو استعملت أي نوع من العنف، ما نتمنى وجدش أي بني آدم هنا على الأرض. بسبب وجود أي عنف ها، ممكن يتم ترحيل الناس الموجودين لأنهم بدهم أصلاً عذر. المستوطن كان يجينا وإحنا سرحين أو إن بنفس الفارضين. يعني محاله بدي يهرق الزرع أو بدي يضرب الغنم أو بدي يعني استفزاز عملية استفزاز. بنمسك ليش بتعمل هيك ليش بتسوي هيك؟ بقول أنا جاي عشان تبتني. After the evacuation, really, I myself, I was so activist in that. Just you know, to have meetings in each village to explain that the goal of the occupation. You know, they wanted, they like, they were like pushing us forcefully. You know, the military aggressive rules in this area, in addition to the settlers' violence. So and no justice. It means that it's like push you forcefully to use the violence. And you know, like, if the Palestinians, like, in this area, if they use the violence, it means that the Palestinians will give them the excuses, you know, more excuses, you know, to use more violence and the end, you know, to control the land and to control this, this area. To be honest, you know, it was not easy, just like, you know, years 
and years of the uh, injustice, of the suffering of the people. And they were, the people, they were very, very close to use the violent way. So since that time, we organized ourselves in the whole area by like this meeting and train the people about like the non-violent. So we must like keep doing that because you know, like it's not like to use non-violent resistance for, for example, for like one year to, it's like an ongoing struggle, you know, with the, with the settlers, with the uh, military administration rules, aggressive rules in this area. July 10. We are the training on non-violence. أول حاجة أنتو ستات روم إحنا معنيين بإن نفعل دور اللاعم بشكل عام وإنكو كستات أنا مهتم فيكو أكثر حتى من الرجال لأنه أنتو بتحكوا إحنا ستات في البيوت شو ما نعمل لا بس أنتو دوركم كتير أكبر من دور الرجال. توان يعني وضع النسوان صعب. النسوان يعني دورهن في المنطقة بس يعني يشتغلن في الأرض ويجيبن الأولاد ويشتغلن في البيت يعني ما لنش ولا أي دور في الحياة غير الدور اللي هذا اللي من فيه فكرت في عمل إشي خاص في النسوان داخل القرية ما كانش يعني بين إيدي النسوان مش متعلمات بس كلن بيشتغلن أشغال يدوية من نسيج صوف تطريز نسيج قش عشان اللي يعني نفعل دور المرأة في الحياة أكثر يعني عشان أحسس المرأة إنه مش دورها بس تشتغل في الأرض وتجيب الأولاد وتشتغل في البيت يعني إنه المرأة بتقدر تسوي إيش أكثر من هيك كمان مقاومة اللاعنف مع الاحتلال يعني لما بروح بروح الإسلام أو ولادة مع الغنم كمان هني بكون الموجودات معهم لو صار اعتداء من المستوطنين من الجيش على على عيان الغنم هن يكون الخط دفاع أول يعني هن يتلقين العنف من قبل المستوطنين يبعد الإسلام عن كمان عن مكان المشكلة لأنه إذا الإسلام بدهم يسووا مشكلة مع المستوطنين بيجوا الجيش شرطة بأخذ الرجل للسجن بعد السجن بده مخالفة أو كفالة لما يطلع أربعة آلاف شيكل خمسة آلاف شيكل لما يبقى يرجع للبيت This is for a telephone? This is for the telephone? He's not a criminal. He's not a criminal. This is for the telephone. I know the law because I'm not here. I know the law. This is illegal because you cannot treat him. It's because I love you so much and I love him too. I love you so much. You, Thank you, you for. I, I think that uh, I love you. for a car and for this. الهندور النساء كما الهندور النساء المرأة نص المجتمع المجتمع الهندور يعني مثلا عجون المستوطنين على البيت تاني فيش زلان بندخلهم ما بندخلهم قد ما نقدر بدنا نقاوم بدنا نموت نموت المرأة بتكافح أكثر من الرجل المرأة بتتعب أكثر من الرجل Restore back like land that close to the settlements by the nonviolent actions. We removed the wall that established in 2006. The goal of that wall just like to control the whole movement of 
the whole area. Because, you know, like 20 is considered as the main gateway for like the whole area. So they want to just like to make this wall and to cut the whole area away of the closest Palestinian town of Vietta. We resist that. Then there was like a conclusion or the, uh, the conclusion that there was like the resolution of the Israeli High Court. This is illegal, you know, even according to their law. So the military administration in this area, also they don't like respect even their law. 19 of March 2011, we are in Umra Valley for an action, and now it's coming out uh, a settler. clear that settlers are throwing rocks and Palestinians are continuing to go back to the same spots day after day without retaliation. It, it exposes the settlers for the, prob being the ones who are provoking and causing the violence. And I think the outside world, when they see that, it's clear that it's, it's not an issue of Palestinians being terrorists and settlers and Israelis using self-defense to protect themselves, but rather an issue of settlers wanting and desiring more land and using violence as a strategy to take more land as opposed to self-defense. It seems the leader of Tayush is being arrested. <laughs> ولما يشوف فش رد ردي بسلاح أصعب من السلاح الناري اللي هو الكاميرا الصورة إذا وجدت أقوى سلاح لما يشوف إنه هذا السلاح اللي أنا لقيته فيه أبشره أي شيء بدي أسوي بغطي وجهه كل ما بيعمله بغطي وجهه بيجي يضرب هالكاميرا بحاول يكسر الكاميرا يضرب أجنبي يضرب عربي هذا كل ما بحاول يسويه little by little we have invited more and more Israeli peace activists and then we got internationals like CBT and the Operation Dove. Tutti i giorni accompagniamo i pastori dell'area che che escono con, con il proprio gregge nei propri terreni e il fatto che noi siamo dotati di, dotati di videocamere, di fotocamere riusciamo a riprendere tutto quello che succede e quindi in caso di, di arresto, di attacco da parte dei coloni abbiamo delle, delle prove e molto spesso i pastori in particolare se vengono attaccati dai coloni sporgono denuncia presso la polizia israeliana e grazie alla, ai filmati riescono ad avere ragione, che è una cosa che non succederebbe nel caso in cui non avessero, non avessero le prove del fatto che, che sono stati attaccati. Ci chiediamo cosa, cosa si può fare di più oltre che stare e come dire, portare 
fra virgolette, la solidarietà e solidarizzare con la causa palestinese. Eh, perché non è sufficiente, perché non è il nostro obiettivo, perché non siamo qui per prendere le parti di qualcuno. L'azione la, di Operazione Colomba è distante anni luce, per esempio, dall'azione di una ONG che va a costruire. Noi di soldi non ne abbiamo, non andiamo a costruire qualcosa. Quello che facciamo è stare con la gente, vivere con la gente. E quindi è una relazione che si costruisce, che si salda piano piano. Siamo qui perché comunque c'è, come dire, c'è qualcosa da difendere che, sono, che è la giustizia minima prima di poter arrivare ad una a questa fantomatica pace fra Israele e palestinesi. Allahunf o il nadal silmi shabi هو جزء تاريخي من حياة الشعب الفلسطيني في مقاومة الاحتلال هلا المطلوب منا ان نعزز هذا الدور نعززه بشكل مشترك هلا في في اسرائيليين كمان هذول الاسرائيليين هم ممكن نكسبهم لصالح الفلسطينيين في متضامنين من خارج من دول اوروبا من امريكا هم بحسوا بمأساة الفلسطينيين وبشعروا معهم ومعنيين وبشاركوا الفلسطينيين في كل همومهم وبشاركوهم حتى الحالات النضالية الشعبية ضد الاحتلال الإسرائيلي هل هذا الخيار الموجود إنه اليوم هو خيار المقاومة الشعبية I know the village I, I uh, full of admiration for their activity and for their uh, non-violent struggle I think this is the only way this is the only way out of this endless cycle because uh, the more violence creates violence and uh, anger brings anger and uh, injustice brings injustice once in an israeli school someone said to me that it's a pity i wasn't blown up with my daughter and uh, in a palestinian school the headmaster told the kids not to listen to me because i weakened their will to fight it's your moral obligation to resist, but you have to resist in a way which will be not only just, but wise, in order to get results. And I think nonviolence is, uh, is the only way out. كثير من الاسر تعتمد على شغل النسوان لانه صار لهم زي مصدر رزق يعني المستوطنين استولوا على كثير من اراضيهم وكثير كمان يعني لما سمموا المواشي يعني كل مصدر الحليب انكب يعني هذا كمان يعني لما فيش يعني ناتج من برا اعتمدوا على شغل النسوان يعني صار لهم زي بديل اذا يعني تسكرت من جهه تفتح من جهة إن يعني إذا إسرائيل يعني منعت إشي إحنا نجد يعني طريق بديل إذا إسرائيل يعني قطعت عنا إشي إحنا ننتج إشي اللي نقدر نعيش منه ونقدر يعني نغاوم إسرائيل بطريقة يعني لا عنفية بدون حرب The people they are working in land, on land they are grazing their, their sheep as a shepherd even if this like forbidden it's really daily resistance You know, for the people just like being on their land, grazing the, uh, their sheep, you know, planting uh, trees, you know. This is really, this is like the, the, the way of life of the people, you know, in this area. Just like to be connected by the land. So this is like kind of resistance to go on that land and to say this is like my land. Across the border to Paris Boulevard Je me souviens the centre del mundo But rising into my mind Follow me Meravigliosa No home and in no disguise Ma rendezvous c'est au centre del mundo Mi tengo nombre
there are two lines, there are two red lines which Israel as a state cannot cross. Israel cannot cross the line of official apartheid. De facto apartheid is okay. We have already de facto apartheid. The other red line which Israel will never cross is by nationalizing Israel. Now, if Israel will enact the West Bank and will emancipate politically the Palestinian population, it means that tomorrow we have here about 50-50% in terms of Jews and Arabs within the area between the Mediterranean and the Jordan Valley. Israel will have to decide whether it turns right, let's say, and enacts the West Bank and does not emancipate. And then Israel tomorrow is an apartheid state, official apartheid state. Or Israel will turn left, just for the sake of the example, will enact the West Bank and emancipate the Palestinian population. But Israel won't be Jewish Zionist state anymore. بتمنى كمان انهم اولادنا يعيشوا بوضع امان احسن من الوضع اللي احنا عشناه وبوضع سلام احسن من الوضع اللي احنا عشناه يعني وكمان بتمنى لاولاد اليهود يعني زي ما بتمنى لاولادي لانهم الصغار ما لهم ذنب في اللي بيصير الشعوب ما لهاش ذنب في اللي بيصير يعني كل هذه اوامر حكومات يعني هي اللي بتتامر على الشعوب وي سافرد ماتش انه از فاذرز وي سافرد ماتش بيكوز اوف ذا اوكيوبيشن بات we really we don't want like even our children just like to suffer the same i don't want them just like uh, to lose hope that you know in the future you know because really it's unbelievable if the children if you teach them about like the hate you know so uh, really it's not easy but you know we have to do the best عنا الجيش والمستوطنين وكل هذا وبقى تبطن مشاكل بيننا وبينه يعني صرنا نخاف كثير منهم يعني شو نصوب هم بواريد وأسلحة وشو نصوي إحنا بدينا وعصي شو نصوب شكرا يا أمير عفوا شكرا
سما صافية وأحلام الصبا تيرانين كيس وكات يوم ألوم أنا خداعهم تدوي دموعي لما الغدر لا يرحم ولا يداري Sama sa